there we are hello saints hello hello welcome here we are another episode another broadcast of the walk with Gino Shaw I'd like to welcome you guys <laughs> as you guys can tell this is a different scenery from last week and uh, as you can see the Sun is out uh, it's bright and uh, it's beautiful out here you know it's beautiful out here in the state of Utah hallelujah hi Kyle hey brother yes good to see you hallelujah so I wanted to uh, speak some truths to you guys today and uh, yeah I, I noticed one of the things um, in my new move and you know this is natural for for anyone is uh, just to be quite honest I've been worrying a lot and um, and I, as a result like I would Sometimes like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't hear nothing like I would meditate on the word and then I'll be quiet and then I'll get nothing, you know, and uh, sometimes in our life uh, we get busy or, or what have you. And we got to be careful because what I notice is uh, the worry voice was drumming in my heart. It, it was louder than the voice of God. So you got to check yourself every now and then. Is the voice, the, the voice of God should be louder than anything else in your life. And if it's not, ask the Holy Spirit, what is it? What voice right now is the loudest? And so let me tell you, I had, um, uh, yeah, it was worry. It was fear naturally, you know, e even though you know these things, you, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you move to a new area and you just think, wow, what am I going to eat tomorrow? What about this? What about, yeah, what about, you know, and you catch yourself. And then if you're not careful, that voice is louder than the voice of God. And, you know, yeah, it, it, it happened to me. And, um, you know, I just thank God, you know, the Holy Spirit reminded me. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, I just feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. Amen. So, uh, yeah, let me pray over this broadcast with you guys. Welcome. Welcome, you guys, as you guys are uh, tuning in, you guys are logging on. Welcome. I'm in a new state, Utah. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm just here to do the, you know, the Lord's will, the Lord's work. And uh, speaking of that, um, the Lord's doing a new thing. And I don't know if I should share it just yet because it's so new. But the Lord is doing something new. And I, I'm, I just got to say, I'm very excited. And uh, when I can, I'll let you guys in on it because um, I believe this is nothing short than amazing. Nothing short of amazing. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, I just thank you. Thank you for this broadcast. Thank you that you even woke me up today. And I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for this people that are tuning in to this broadcast. Bless them, Lord. I pray that you meet their needs and their wants, Lord. And I just pray right now that if anyone needs healing, may they be healed right now in the name of Jesus. And I just lift this broadcast up to you, Lord. And I right now I just pray over my mouth, over my tongue. And I pray, Lord, that I speak what you want me to speak. I just pray that the Holy Spirit just ushers in his anointing and I only speak what he wants me to speak. And I just pray that uh, when I speak, that it falls on good soil. And I pray that your ears, the people that are watching, the people that are listening, that your ears are tuned in, that your ears are open and that your eyes are open, that you may see spiritually what is going on. And I just bless this broadcast. I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus Christ. And I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ, me and my family and my extended family. And I cover you all that are watching us with the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice, your perfect sacrifice, that all of us who come to you may have eternal life forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. All right. So, um, yeah, I just want to go over some truths. It's good to go over truths because if you go over the truth, then you can weed out the lies. 
and uh, just like the, the lie of worry, just like, you know, and we all know the Bible says don't worry, right? But we catch yourself worrying sometimes. So uh, it's good to, to, to review these things and it's good to practice these things. And so um, just like geometry, you know, when I was going through school, I, I didn't like geometry. I didn't appreciate it, but I do now. Not that I'm any good at it, but I can appreciate it. I appreciate it because I can relate it to the Bible. You see, in geometry, you have these principles and you have these laws. And it says, okay, well, you need to prove this shape is the shape that, that it is. You know, for instance, if you have a triangle, prove that it's a triangle. And so uh, I think one of them is like, uh, if a triangle has a 90 degree angle, and then opposite of that 90 degree angle, there's the, what is it? I think the hypotenuse, right? And so I think that's what it is. I hope that's what it is. If not, you guys know what I mean. Uh, that line directly across a 90 degree angle, I believe is the hypotenuse. Now I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> I should have looked at it prior, but you guys know what I'm saying. So you have these laws and these steps you do to prove something. And I so appreciate that now that, you know, I'm a Christian and it, and it helps you in your everyday life. So I wanted to go over some of this and some of this is, okay, here's a truth. God's kingdom will rule forever and ever. Okay. Is that, or is that not a truth? Okay. And that's, uh, in Psalm 145, 13. And so Psalm 145, 13, it states, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your domain, your dominion endures throughout all generations. Okay. So this is being set up forever. It's not going to go away. Okay. We even can go to, uh, Exodus 15. Let's go to Exodus 15. And I just want to lay this groundwork to where I'm about to go. So we're going to lay some groundwork here and Exodus 15. So Exodus 15 and Exodus 15. And then we want to go to verse 18 and in verse 18, it says the Lord shall reign to eternity and beyond. Hey, wasn't that a cartoon? I, what was that? Toy Story, right? To infinity and beyond. Yeah, what was that character? The uh the little air that little astronaut dude? I forgot his name. I just realized that. Did they just rip off the Bible? The Lord shall reign to eternity and beyond. That sounds awfully familiar. Alright, so you know what? And so okay, so we established that God's kingdom will rule forever and ever. And what else is the truth? Here's another one. God is seated on his throne and he will never leave it. Or also he will never be defeated. Okay. And that's in Psalm 47. Let's go to Psalm 47. Let's go back to Psalm. Okay. Normally I would use my digital Bible, but I'm using my phone to uh, do the video. So Psalm 40, okay, here we go. Psalm 47, and then we want to go to eight. And it says, God reigns over the nation. God sits on his holy throne. Okay, so he sits on his throne and he's not going to give it up. And how do we know he's not going to give it up? Well, throughout the Bible, kings have given up their thrones by either they died in war or they just died, right? But we know our God is an eternal God. He's not going to die. So therefore, he's going to be on his throne forever. Amen. Okay. What's another truth? God rules his kingdom through words. God rules. I know some of these are, are, are very simple, but they're very, nevertheless, they're very potent. Okay. Simple, but potent. Okay. So, 
God rules his kingdom through words. So Genesis 1 and then 3 is an example. And God said, let there be light and there was light. Notice it said, God said, God said, not, not God, you know, formed it in his hands. No, God said, that means God spoke it. So God rules his kingdom by his words. Think about that. Everything you see and everything you don't see is through words. It's words. That's how everything came to be is through words. So I, I know we hear it all the time. Oh, words are powerful. Think about that. Words really are powerful. What you speak is very powerful. And you can never underestimate that. You know, as you speak, so goes your word. You know, that's just the way it is. Hi, Anna Marie. I know, right? That mountain is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I just, you know, one of the things I, I love about uh, Utah and even Nevada, Nevada especially, uh, you're surrounded by these huge mountains. And I remember going to work every day and I'm just in awe. By the way, one of the things I think Nevadans take for granted is the mountains. Because I guess people that grow up there, they're just so used to it. But me being a newcomer, I see the mountain. I'm just in awe because they're just so huge. And you're just reminded of how small you are. And it's just, you know, I was just awestruck. Literally, I was just awestruck every single day that I got up. I went to work and I'm surrounded by these huge mountains. And uh, let me tell you, um, when I would come down off the mountain, I would pray for uh, Las Vegas. I would pray and I would declare every day over that city. And uh, yeah, the mountains here are just beautiful. And uh, when it gets warmed up, I plan on going to some of these parks around here and do some, you know, some hiking. Uh, and guess what? I'm gonna take you guys with me. <laughs> Amen. But uh, yeah, it's so beautiful. And uh, so yeah, God rules his kingdom through his words, through his words. And guess what? We're his sons and daughters. And I know this is very simple stuff, but we can overlook it. We can overlook it and be careful what you say, even even over yourself. You know, you might uh, drop a cup or break a plate and you might go, oh, I'm such an idiot. No, 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 no. Don't say that. Don't ever say that. Speak good things over yourself. Do not curse yourself. Your words are very, very powerful because you're sons and daughters of the Most High God. If he spoke words and it came in, into existence, think about the power that you guys have. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. Nothing different. But God rules his kingdom through his words. And another uh, thing is, is God loves words so much. Guess what? He calls himself what? The word. That's how much God loves words. Right? And that's in um, John. Let's go to John. Du, 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 John. John 1 1 and actually I want to I want to read John 1 through 4 okay in the beginning before all time was the word Christ and the word was with God and the word was God himself there you go the word was God himself that's how much he loves words he was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him, through speaking of words. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. So did you catch that last part? In him was life. What does that mean? It means in a form of words, he was pregnant. So all you ladies out there, before you were pregnant, God was pregnant. God was pregnant with us. We lived inside of him before the foundations of the earth. We lived and moved and existed inside of God. In him was life and the power to, to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. That's us. Before you were pregnant, 
God was pregnant. Doesn't that blow your mind? Yeah, it's, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And so, what conclusions can we come from this? From these truths, what conclusion? And the conclusions is, is for us, for those of us that have received Jesus Christ in our life, in our hearts, is as a child of God, we will never be defeated. We will never be defeated. Our daddy's never been defeated. Therefore, we will never be defeated. Okay? And he brings us through things. You know, we go through trials and tribulations, but it's never to set us up for failure. Never. The only time, I think the only time people encounter failure, if you can call it that, is if, you know, uh, they turn away or they get distracted, they get addicted to drugs or what have you, you know. But even then, God can still redeem them. Amen. And he could turn that situation around. Amen. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, we will never be defeated. And so uh, we are more than conquerors. I know you guys heard that. We are more than conquerors. Let's go to Romans 8.37. Romans 8.37. So Romans 8.37. So yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. So in all things, we are more than conquerors and we have an overwhelming victory. So we are more than conquerors. Why doesn't just say, hey, we're, we're conquerors. See, the Bible uses a language. It uses words that I believe we don't even put together well, even today, you know, e even today, if there was a battle, you know, United States will say, oh, United States uh, conquered um, Iran. Boom. We conquered Iran. See, see how, we just, how could we don't say United States was more than a conqueror? Y you know, the Bible just strings together these words, these verbs, these adjectives, and it puts it together so poetically. You know, and so we are more than conquerors. And I believe we're more. We all know a conqueror is someone that wins. And throughout history, there was. You know, we know some conquerors, uh, good and bad. Napoleon was a conqueror. Genghis Khan was a conqueror. Um, you know, and uh, throughout history, there's, there's been lots and lots of conquerors. But guess what? What they all have in common at one point or another, guess what? They were defeated. But who are we? We are more than conquerors. You hear that? We are more than conquerors. That means we will not taste defeat. We will not taste defeat because we are more than conquerors. We are more than those leaders in the past uh, that conquered uh, country after country, nation after nation. We are more than conquerors. Amen. And so the other thing is we are in God's we are in God's image. Therefore, we are destined to rule and reign. Does God not rule and reign? Yes, he does. Therefore, we are in God's image and we are destined to rule and reign. You know, and that's found in Genesis 1:26. We go to Genesis here. Let's go to Genesis one twenty six. Here we go. And you guys heard this before. Then God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but spiritual personality and moral likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So we are made in God's image and we have his authority on this earth. And what gives us that authority is we have these physical bodies to rule over this earth. And um, here's a question for you guys. If we are destined to rule and reign why aren't we doing it today? Hmm. Why are we not doing it today? 
you know? Why, you know what? You know, after you read these truths, you can't help but think the church, the church, yes, I'm back on the church. The church should be ruling and reigning today. The church should be ruling and reigning today. But why not? I think part of it is because one, we're divided, right? How many denominations do we have? You know, we are divided. We need to somehow unite. And this has been on my heart for months. So I don't know, you know, I'm not, I'm not famous. I, I, you know, I, I don't know why God put this on my heart, but I want to unite the church. Uh, right now, I don't know how. Um, I've, I've sent messages to some leaders that I thought that were, you know, leading the church. And because um, automatically I feel like, okay, if you're in that position, uh, then why don't you combine the church? Why don't you get people together, unite the church? You know, I, I don't understand that part. And so I don't know if God's raising me up to do that. Maybe I, we'll see, you know, but it's just, it's on my heart. I want to see the church united. I want to see the church stand. And speaking of that, uh, I was listening to, uh, uh, what is it, the John Ramirez, you know, I'm sure you guys are familiar with John Ramirez. He was an ex-Satanist turned Christian. He has a powerful testimony. If you haven't heard it, you should check it out. John Ramirez, he's all over YouTube. Check him out. And he stated this one thing, and it just, I knew it, but I didn't know how to articulate it the way he did. And that is this. He said, Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh, it took what? It took 10 plagues for Pharaoh to fold over. It took 10 plagues for Pharaoh to turn over and to let the people go. Now, fast forward to today. What do we have? The church, we encounter one pestilence. One, just one pestilence. And the church folded already. That tells you right there, we have a long ways to go. We have a long ways to go. Me and you, we have a long ways to go. You know, think about that. The Pharaoh lasted 10 plagues, but us, you know, the church, you know, we have a long ways to go. And so, and you know, I, I could stop picking on the church and I could just point it to you and me, you know, uh, how many of us are ruling and reigning? You know, you could go on Facebook and I understand, you know, life, but you get on Facebook, you know, how many of us are sick? How many of us are dying? How many of us are, you know, we're just, you know, it's very rare to meet a Christian who's ruling and reigning, you know, and I, I'm just being honest. How many people do you look at as Christians that are ruling and reigning? You know, I would like to, at one point, you know, be able to say, you know, I, I don't think I can say it now, to be honest. I don't think I can say it. I think I'm on my way, but I don't think I can say it right now. But at one point, I, I would love to be in that category. We all should be in that category. The word says we should be in that category. And so that leads us to the next question. Well, why not? Why are we not ruling and reigning? And I think part of the problem is, uh, I think it's more than one, but part of it is, is sometimes we get caught up in our own little micro families. You know, we got to uh, make sure we make enough for our family and we get tied up with family, our extended families. And somehow we need to look at our neighbor. Somehow we need to include our neighbor. Who's our neighbor? Our neighbor is, uh, well, yeah, it could be your next door neighbor, but it's also the person you meet at Walmart. It's the person you meet at Costco. It's the person as you're driving around. Uh, it's your neighbor is the, the homeless you see in the corner, you know, how do we incorporate them? How do we extend our love towards them? And we got to break out our little micro families. That's including me myself. You know, how do we break out our micro families and extend God's grace and extend his love? And, you know, just, you know, we got to unite. That's the key. I think that's the key right there. We got to unite as Christians, we got to unite as believers. We got to unite as saints, 
you know? And so uh, how do we do that? How do we break free of that? Stay tuned. Hopefully I'm gonna answer that in the next video. And uh, I just wanna thank you guys for, for listening. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. And uh, I just bless you guys. And uh, like I said, God, the Lord is doing a new thing with me right now. And uh, I just, I wanna be careful. I don't wanna put the, uh, what do you call it? I don't wanna put the uh, cart before the horse, so to speak. So um, let me let this pan out, but I'm just, I'm really excited. My spirit man is really jumping up and down right now. And uh, I just can't wait to uh, tell you guys the good news, this, you know, what the Lord is doing right now. And uh, as of right now, I, you know, I'm just at peace right now. I mean, there's a lot of things that's unfinished. There's a lot of things I still got to do because I just got here. But with my re recent revelation of what was, you know, bothering me, what was, you know, that, that cloud of worry that was over me, you know, it's broken off and I'm not worried right now, you know? So, you know, amen. And uh, yeah, uh, so just stay tuned. Tune in next week, you know? And uh, we'll see what what does the body of Christ need to do to break free? We, we gotta break free out of this because you know what? This is not going away. Um, what I don't want is is January 6th. I think that's when they open up the envelopes or whatever and they, uh, you know, President Trump's gonna win or or whether it comes to a re-vote. Um, I read in the news that uh, President Trump, he's considering dispatching troops to do a re-vote in the swing states. And uh, let's say that happens and uh, President Trump wins a re-election, which I expect that to be. But then I don't want the body of Christ to rest back and go, whew, we dodged a bullet. Okay, things can go back to normal. No, 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 no. We just got a taste of what the enemy is, is trying to do. We just got a taste and we were not ready. Even me, I was not ready. We were not ready. And we folded too quickly, too quickly for this. So you can bet the enemy is strategizing for the next thing. As Christians, we need to get downloads. We need to strategize as well as Christians and come together and unite for when the next big thing happens for us to be ready. Because we were not ready for this one. We were not ready. Amen. So I want to encourage you guys. Thank you guys. I love you guys very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.